be asking me, well, Yuri, what are the benefits of interval training? That's a great question. Let's have a look. All right, so we're going to look at three studies. The first one here was done in 2005 in the Journal of Applied Physiology. And in this study, they had subjects on a bike. Now, again, this was done on a bicycle or a cycle on a cycle. Um, and these, the methods can be extrapolated to running as well. So you can do the same protocol with running and get very similar results. So they had participants do thir a 30-second Wingate test, which is pretty much a 30-second all-out um, test on the bike with incrementally increasing resistance. It's a gr pretty grueling test, actually. So they had them do this four to seven bouts. Um, sorry, I should kind of regress for a second. So 30 seconds all-out effort Wingate test with four minutes recovery in between each. They then repeated this four to seven times depending on the training day, and they did this every other day for two weeks. What did they find? This was done in previously untrained individuals, and they found that six, only six of these sessions doubled their aerobic endurance. Let me repeat that. Doubled. That's six interval training workouts that maybe on average were about 30 minutes, doubled their aerobic endurance in people who had previously not really done anything. That is phenomenal. It's 100% improvements. But it gets better. Let's have a look at another study. Same journal, 2009, a more recent study. This time, what they had, uh, this time subjects were running, so they were actually running uh, 30 seconds, 90% of their maximum speed with a three minute recovery. This was repeated eight to 12 times, again, over, over about a two week period. And then they had a control group that was basically just doing long duration runs, and they wanted to compare which was most effective. This is phenomenal stuff, if you ask me. So the researchers found that the interval training protocol that they used maintained muscle oxy oxidative capacity, which is basically uh, a fancy way of saying the muscles were still able to use oxygen in a very efficient manner, so obviously important for producing energy, uh, maintained the capillar capillarization, so the capillaries going to the muscles, obviously bringing the blood, so the blood flow to the muscles was maintained, and the endurance performance improvements were also maintained. Now here's the kicker. All of this was seen despite the fact that the study group, the experimental group, trained 15 kilometers versus 45 kilometers per week in the control group. That's 66% less training volume for the same benefits. Just take a moment to let that sink in. If you could train twice a week instead of six times a week as we looked at you know in John's example and get the same results with obviously out the injuries and the overtraining and the overuse injuries would that not would that not interest you would that not be you know slightly intriguing well I've got my hand raised right here as to say that yes sign me up I want to do this and that's the power of interval training that's the power of intensity and you can't <laughs> You can't get that with duration and frequency with low intensity runs. I mean, you could, but you'd have to really, as this study shows, run a lot more and predispose your body to a lot more injuries. Actually, in fact, I just gave a talk at Nike about strength training for runners, and we were talking about, uh, kind of, this is a little bit off topic of interval training, but I was asking the group, we had about 20 runners there, I was asking the group, how many of you have suffered from running injuries? And I was, I was not surprised, I, was, I, was, I kind of expected this, but all 20 people raised their hands. Now this, is what, this was a half marathon and marathon training group. Every single person in that group, 20 people or so, raised their hands. And I was asking them, you know, what were your issues? What were your injuries? Shin splints, hip issues, stress, fra stress fractures, plantar fasciitis, uh, carpal, um, compartment syndrome, you name it, they had it. And a lot of this is due to the heavy poundage that miles and miles and miles of running can create. I mean, if I were them, if I were you, I'd prefer to do less running at a higher intensity and get the same or better results. Let's look at another study. This is a more familiar study in the fat loss kind of arena. And it was a study done out of McMaster University in Hamilton. And what they had the subjects do here was work at close to about 90% for four minutes. And then they broke that up with about four minutes of recovery and they repeated that 10 times. So it was a bit more of a grueling, uh, you know, workout session, a little bit longer. But they repeated this over, this is over a two week period again. And what they found 
was that only seven sessions allowed or improved fat burning by 36%. Again, if you're in this game, if you're in the running game to burn fat, intensity is the key. And interval training will allow you to achieve that higher intensity, which will allow you to burn more fat in less time. Sounds promising to me. So what's the message that I'm trying to get across to you? I mean, what's my agenda here? Basically, what I'm trying to say is this. I want to help you out. I want to help save you time. I also want to see that you're healthy as you improve your performance. And the bottom line is this. Interval training is the bomb. And bomb is a four letter word, but in this case, it's a good one. It's the key to allowing you to improve your performance while maintaining your health, saving you time, having more fun, and really just, you know, I don't know if you've, you may have, I'm sure you've experienced this at some point, is when you work out at a high intensity, you feel euphoric afterwards. And, and runners talk about this runner's high. Well, the runner's high is created by endorphins that circulate in the blood when we achieve certain intensities. You don't get that runner's high when you're just going for a long duration light intensity run. No, you get that when you're working out at a good intensity, at a higher intensity, burning up a sweat, huffing and puffing. You know, those are all good indications that your intensity is where it should be to start getting amazing results. Now, let me, I just wanna, you know, if you're, if the, if the word intensity kind of frightens you, don't worry, I'm not saying like, again, intensity is all relative, right? So if you're a beginner, intensity for you, a higher intensity for you might be jogging instead of walking. If you're a high performance athlete, that might mean sprinting uphill versus sprinting on a level surface. Rel it's all relative to where you are. And the beautiful thing is that as you get fitter, that relative level of intensity will increase so you can push your body in a safe way more and more and more and the improvements that you'll get in terms of your health and overall fitness are just phenomenal so intensity via interval training is the key is the secret okay so that is it for this episode Stay tuned for the next video in this little series where we're going to, be, I'm going to give you a couple specific, very cool interval training programs, some brand new programs that we're developing. And I'm going to show you exactly how they're going to help you either start running, run faster, get better results in your races, and lose fat a lot easier than you could possibly imagine. So stay tuned for that video. Thanks for listening to me and watching this one. And uh, please leave a comment, let me know what you thought. I'm Uriel Kane, and I'll see you in the next video. In the meantime, check out mytravelertrainer.com.